I am not really sure why I'm even making this video today. Yesterday afternoon for about, I don't know, five or six hours, views on the channel went from 10,000 to zero in a matter of seconds. It stayed that way until 7, 8 o'clock last night. Then views have started to slowly increase. Very, very slowly. Problem is, the views are not being counted in real time. I'm looking at my Brittany Griner video last night. Seeing 1,800 views in six hours. Um, it had over 3,000 views within the first hour it was uploaded. Likes and comments are being counted. Views are not being counted. I've been in touch with YouTube about this. Apparently, this is a global site-wide problem that's affecting everyone. I was hoping it was going to be fixed by this morning. It's not. You know, you try not to panic in situations like this, but it's kind of hard not to be concerned about it. I'm not worried about the lost money from yesterday. I'm worried about the algorithm. If the algorithm sees your channel tank in viewership, it could take months to recover from that. Hopefully. Hopefully that's not going to be the case. To be honest with you, I'm struggling to find the motivation to work today because I don't know if you guys are even going to see this video, but I don't have any control over that. All I can do is keep going. So let's go ahead and get into this. I am incredibly confused right now. And no, it has nothing to do with the YouTube glitch. For years now, all I have heard from the mainstream media, and more specifically, Stephen A. Smith, all I hear about every January is the constant complaining about the lack of black head coaches in the NFL. You know, I find it strange. I never hear this same complaint with the NHL. The NHL has existed for 105 years, 38,325 days. There are 32 teams in the league. In the span of almost 40,000 days in their 105-year history, there is only when one black head coach in the NHL. Back in the late 90s, Dirk Graham coached the Chicago Blackhawks for a total of 59 games. Didn't even make it a full season. Um, that doesn't sound very diverse to me. We're all supposed to be dedicated to diversity, equity, and inclusion, right? I don't remember receiving the memo from deacons at Woke United Methodist that the NHL was exempt from this directive. This whole time, I've been under the impression all industries were forced to comply. Over the last couple of years, the WNBA has worked tirelessly to recruit more women into the league. The league supposedly dedicated to women filled with dudes. Every night, Kathy Engelbert writes in her diversity diary, tears falling down her face as her league consistently fails to represent diversity. The only time we hear complaints about the lack of black head coaches is when it pertains to the National Football League. Why? Because that's where the complaints will have the most impact. Like I said, Stephen A. Smith, one of the leading complainers when it comes to the lack of black head coaches in the NFL. Which is why I was incredibly confused, surprised even, with his commentary from yesterday morning on First Take. I'm not sure how many of you guys saw my Lovey Smith video yesterday. The view stopped being counted almost 24 hours ago. But just in case you missed it, just in case you don't know, Lovey Smith fired by the Houston Texans late Sunday night. The firing immediately sparked fake outrage on social media. I was expecting Stephen A. Smith to join the fake outrage yesterday morning. Instead, he took a completely different approach. Watch for yourself. It's clearly wrong and unfair that he was fired mm -hmm. after one year. Uh, Cully fired after one year. The Houston Texans organization, I'm going to say something loud and clear over the national airwaves, and I don't give a damn what anybody thinks. African Americans need not apply. Yeah. This is not an organization that has been fair to African Americans as far as I'm concerned. And I have these two as an example. You could use Romeo Cornell and the kind of situation they put him in in the past. Um, I don't like this organization. First of all, Stephen A. Smith absolutely right about one thing. The Houston Texans are the worst-run organization in the NFL. Their decision-making absolutely horrendous. This is the team that gave Bill O'Brien complete control over personnel. He trades DeAndre Hopkins for a second-round draft pick, arguably the worst trade in NFL history. So. 
I agree with Stephen A. The Texans are a dump. But here's the thing. I keep hearing the same complaint from the shit fucks. And damn near every tweet I showed you guys yesterday, and we just heard Stephen A. Smith say it again, I keep hearing this same complaint about fairness. The Houston Texans aren't treating black head coaches fairly. They're setting them up for failure. There's no such thing as fairness. Generally speaking, head coaching opportunities, they don't open up with well-run franchises. The Saints opening last season, that was a rarity, a head coaching position available on a franchise with a recent history of winning. That's generally not how it works. Not to mention the fact the Saints were a complete dump for decades until Sean Payton arrived. How fair was the situation in New Orleans to Sean Payton back in 2005? How fair was that? The city was devastated. The Saints had no quarterback. Drew Brees, he was questionable coming to New Orleans. It was unknown whether he would ever be 100% again. Sean Payton turned things around. He built the franchise. Did you see any signs this season that Lovey Smith was building something in Houston? Hell, 99% of the season, I barely saw signs of life in Houston. The Lions, they were atrocious last season in Dan Campbell's first year. But towards the end of the season, the Lions started showing improvement signs of life. After starting 0-10-1, they went 3-3 three three the last six games. To be honest with you, probably saved Dan Campbell's job. Had that not happened and the Lions fired Dan Campbell after one season, we would not have heard one complaint from the mainstream media. Since Stephen A. and the Butt Brigade is all about fairness, let's talk about fairness for a second. How fair were the Texans last offseason to Josh McCown? Josh McCown was the front runner for that job. The Texans wanted to hire him. All they were waiting on was the ink to dry on the contract. What happened? Why didn't Josh McCown get the job in Houston? Because Brian fucking Flores sued the NFL for mythical racism. According to multiple reports, the Texans were apprehensive to hire a white man with no head coaching experience. It wouldn't be a good look. I would imagine, and this is pure speculation on my part, but I would imagine the NFL front office influenced that decision. Either way, Josh McCown was passed over for Lovey Smith, the lovable loser. Seems like a nice guy, incredibly respectful, but he's also a multi-time proven loser. Since we're all about fairness, how fair was that to Josh McCown? To me, that seems like a case of reverse racism. He wasn't given the job because of the color of his skin. The Texans were afraid of the backlash. Fast forward one year later, they're getting the backlash anyway. Stephen A. Smith told black head coaches not to take the job in Houston. I found this strange and also incredibly amusing. This is another example of a shit fuck responding to a situation out of emotion instead of logic. Clearly, Stephen A. Smith was triggered by another black man being fired in the NFL. The Texans are a dump, no doubt about it, but there are only 32 teams in this league with five head coaching vacancies available. If you remove the Texans from that list, that leaves only four. If your mission is to see more black head coaches, why would you be encouraging them not to take the job? This seems counterintuitive to me, but what the hell do I know? I'm not a shit fuck. Stephen A. Smith, he was not the only birthing person who completely missed the mark here. We were also given some fresh turds straight from the facial orifice of one of our favorite failures here on the channel, Bamani Jones. Oh, the Bobo. Bo Jones. Bo Jones was once again a guest on CNN this morning. I guess this feature every week kind of makes sense. You know that old saying, you are who your friends are? If you look at it that way, this collaboration makes perfect sense. Don Lemon is a confirmed failure struggling to draw ratings. Bamani Jones is the inventor of huge embarrassing failures who has never drawn ratings. Bobo woke up early this morning to be first in line to squeeze Don's lemons. Bo... 
Never been much of a coffee drinker in the morning. He prefers the fresh lemonade produced by another man. The failure was reacting to the firing of Lovey Smith and once again proved his shit fuckery. Watch for yourself. I'm not exactly sure who should take that job. Where he says no black person take that job. I wouldn't recommend a white man take that job either. Now, when Lovey got it, you have to remember word was going around that they were thinking about hiring Josh McCown, who's a former NFL quarterback whose only coaching experience is in high school. And it looked really bad while the league was being sued for discrimination about his hiring practices with coaches. What then happened is Lovey Smith, who has an impeccable resume, wound up getting the job. But nobody was going to give him that job. And anybody else was going to give him a head coaching job. So what the Texans are is a job where I think the last two times they've hired black dudes, largely because no self-respected white man would go take that job. Like, um, did I just hear him say Lovey Smith has an impeccable resume? The lovable loser? Impeccable resume? If that were the case, how come the other 31 teams in the league were not begging to hire him? The Brews also said the only reason Lovey Smith received the job in Houston is because no self-respecting white man would take it. Another swing and a miss by Mamani Jones. The truth is no self-respecting white man was given the opportunity and they weren't given the opportunity because the Texans were afraid to be labeled with mythical racism. Both of these guys, Bobo, Stephen A., they act like coaching in Houston is equivalent to coaching in the WNBA dump. Are the Texans the worst run organization in the league, at least from a management perspective? Sure, you could argue that. But that doesn't mean the right coach, no matter his race, could not turn things around in Houston. Like I said earlier, the Saints were a complete dump before Sean Payton. Handful of playoff appearances in 40 years. Traded away their entire draft package for Ricky Williams. Losing season after losing season. They found the right head coach and it completely changed the franchise. The Texans, along with other NFL teams, they are not being given the opportunity to find the right head coach because... They're too worried about fucking diversity. They are hiring unqualified, losing coaches instead of the right coach. The Texans have $47 million in cap space this offseason. They have a young roster loaded with potential. They have two first-round draft picks, five of the first 74 picks in the draft. The potential is there. They just need the right head coach. Hard to find the right coach when you're trying to meet the media standards of diversity. But give me your thoughts. Stephen A. Smith demands black head coaches not to take the job in Houston. If the other four teams don't hire a black head coach, he will then complain about mythical racism. Sound off in the comments below. Make sure to like and subscribe. Click the notification bell to receive all notifications from the channel. Best way to contact me is by email at btlkc84 at gmail.com. kc underscore btl84 on Twitter. I'll see you guys later.